Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today's lesson will be on mambo. Now, the mambo I'm playing on this kit is a lot different than the mambo I played when you saw me do uh, the jazz drums. So this is a lot heavier. The jazz mambos, the jazz Latin rhythms that I did on that Gretsch Centennial kit was for playing these rhythms in a straight-ahead acoustic setting. This is more of a fusion jazz setting. So it's a little heavier, more drums, drums are tuned different, it's a different thing happening. A lot of these rhythms today we're going to go over are in my book, Advanced Coordination for Drum Set and Hand Percussion. So I know most of you have that and that's why I'm doing these videos so you can hear and see what's going on with these grooves. And the particular grooves we're doing are on page 54, Mambo Sun, one through four. So we'll work with these four grooves today and we'll talk a little about some variations you can do. Now the mambo is a dance rhythm. So, you know, you might be on a big band gig and play two or three mambos a night. And in fact, mambo was popularized in this country by Perez Prado. Uh, this is a Cuban rhythm. Remember, mambo is just like the cha-cha-cha. And actually the cha-cha-cha surpassed the mambo eventually as the most popular rhythm. But we're talking about, you know, it was invented, I guess, uh, so people tell me, in Cuba in the 1930s, and then it was brought to the United States in the 40s and the 50s, where you had great big bands like Mario Baza and um, just so many of these great bands that played mambo for dances. And in fact, when I lived in New York, I played a lot of uh, kinds of salsa gigs, and salsa is kind of a genre of music where you have mambo, cha-cha-cha, merengue, lots of different dances within that genre, which is called salsa music, dance music, okay? But today we're going to be doing more, again, I keep saying it, of a fusion setting, sort of like what you'd hear, um, you know, Michelle Camilo, that kind of stuff, a little heavier, Arturo Sandoval, Paquito de Rivera, so those kinds of grooves. So the main thing you need to know for this are some basic timbali rhythms, because once again, these rhythms are made up of the conga player and the timbali player, and maybe a little bit of bongos thrown in. And you have to cover all those parts as one person. Sometimes, though, as I do, you'll be playing with a conga player. And when you do that, you want to leave some things out. So that's the first thing we'll go over. So the keskara is this rhythm, if you remember correctly, from my timbali book or my timbali rhythm um, YouTube video that I put up there. And that rhythm sounds like this. Now you can see that on page 54, Mambo number one, that's that rhythm on top with the X's. That can be played on the bell, the ride cymbal, a cowbell, a closed hi-hat. So I have all three options here. And formulaically, a lot of times you'll want to play it on a closed hi-hat for the verses of a tune or the A section. And then the bridge, you might want to go to the bell or a cowbell or that compares to the chorus of a tune if you're playing with a vocalist, all right? So you can switch around ride surfaces. With the clave, it sounds like this. So that's the main thing you want to work on first. Now one thing you can do with that is set that pattern up and then practice left hand rhythms under it like I've done for all of these things in this book on pages seven and eight of this book. So that's one thing you can work on. That rhythm can also be played on the bell of the cymbal. Now I want you to pay, uh, pay careful attention to the way I'm doing these long and short notes. The long notes, the dashes, are played with the shaft of the stick and the dots are played with the tip of the stick. And that'll work the same way on the cowbell and the hi-hat. So. So that's important for the feel. I'll play a, a, a full thing for you, a full mambo. I'll play mambo number, let's say number two, and we'll go over these, don't worry, in a minute in more detail. But here's two so you could hear that accent pattern. <laughs> So 
So that's important. You don't want to just go. It's gotta, it's gotta have some inflection. And don't be afraid to vary up that symbol. The um, Kiskara is like a mother rhythm. You should come back to that, but you could do some variations within that. Now, you don't always have to play clave, obviously. You can just do straight hi-hat um, quarter notes, so like this. And that probably should be the way you should start out. So that's mambo rhythm number one on page 54. Now, the bass drum will play this little upbeat thing on the and a two and slightly play on four. That's optional. So it's the bass player tune bow. So. So if I play mambo number one with all those components, it sounds like this. All right, on bell the cymbal, it sounds like this. And on the cowbell, it sounds like this. And you see there, I'm doubling the clave now with my left foot. So all of these left foot patterns, just like in the cha-cha, are interchangeable. You should be able to switch them, practice them in, any, in all ways, all right? Now, when you play the bell of the cymbal, be careful. It can get pretty obnoxious. This is a really loud cymbal, pretty loud bell. And I'm doing that on purpose so you can hear exactly what's going on. But you don't want to use that too much. Maybe during the solos a little. Basically, the most intense part of the tune, that's when you'll go a little wetter. Uh, you, you know, again, I said in the cha-cha video, this music's very dry. So you see all these uh, ride surfaces are pretty dry. The cowbells, the hi-hats. When you want to open it up, that's when you might use the cymbal. You can use the regular part of the cymbal. To, to create more excitement. Now, I usually leave my snare drum off when I play these rhythms. In another video, we'll do a sango, and that's when you put your snare drum on. That's more of a funk kind of rhythm that you could use in a mambo setting. They're interchangeable. But for these, I almost always leave my snare drum off. So if we look at number two, we're introducing the conga pattern there. Now, the conga pattern is normally this in mambo. And again, you could watch one of my many YouTube videos on kungas, and you'll see that pattern. So we want to simulate that with the left hand now. And we can play clave with the left foot. Again, this is number two on page 54. And this is what that sounds like. So there you have your conga pattern. So you're playing the timbali parts and the conga parts, one person. Now, if you are playing with a conga player, you probably want to leave that out and just do pattern number one instead of two. So now pattern three has a little bit of a variation. It should go a little slower. So the hand's moving around a little bit more. So. And number four is even more complicated, and there you're playing a little bit different rhythm with your right hand. 
So again, a little slower. So those are the four mamba rhythms in this book. The last thing you want to think about are two bell patterns. One hand would do the bongo bell pattern, which is this. And then the right hand would play the cascarazzo. So you can get some pretty cool things with that. All right, so it's real fun stuff to do these multi-bell patterns. Now let's talk about soloing over a mambo. This is very common if you play in a Latin jazz band. If you play in a dance band, you'll also play solos on congas or timbales or bongos. But the drum set is a little different because now we have our feet. So what I like to do is I like to start simple, leave lots of space, and I play these timbali-like rhythms. In other words, I'm playing timbales on the drum set. So I'm phrasing in triplets, I'm playing over the bar line. Uh, if you watch my timbali solo video, you'll see a lot of these ideas as well there. So I like to leave a lot of space, and again, I'm trying to play clave with my left foot, and then I'll make it more and more dense until it gets more exciting, and usually I move over then to my hi-hat, or a double bass pedal, which I use sometimes, whatever I can do to create more excitement. So the idea is to build it up. Uh, you can use little uh, motifs. The cowbells are great for that, playing little melodies. You can have a question and answer session with yourself. So, so you know, if you tune your drums like that, it works really well. So there's lots of cool things. So what I'm going to do now is play over a little pattern that I did. I played some piano and some bass, and I made it into a loop. And that's something I love to do when I practice. So we'll play some ideas for you so you can hear some things. build it up into a frenzy. The crowd goes wild, that kind of thing, all right? But that's the way I like to usually do my big solo moment in those cases. Other times, you could just be trading eights or fours, and in that case, you know, you don't want to go that crazy. So I hope you enjoyed this video. The next video we'll do will be on the Wawanko, which is a great Cuban folkloric rhythm that sounds great on a drum set. So we'll see you later.